Hello, this is Ethan from Dark Zebra, and today is the first in our series on Docker virtualization technology, how you can use it for development, use it for system administration, and basically use it for fun and profit. So first question is, what is Docker exactly? And if you're watching this video, you, you've probably already asked that question. Well, Docker is a virtualization technology. There are other virtualization technologies like VirtualBox and VMware, which create virtual computers, virtual machines that run on top of physical hardware. Those are really good because they allow us to run multiple operating systems with multiple capabilities and functionality all on top of one physical piece of hardware. And this also makes us more efficient in how we use our hardware. Now, the problem with virtual machines is that you have to run an entire virtual an entire operating system for every virtual machine and so that's where docker comes in docker is the idea the ability to virtualize on top of an one operating system so we can run linux and using a technology called linux containers docker is able to create these bubbles of binaries and functionality that are encapsulated and isolated from the rest of the system. And that way I can have multiple pieces of virtualization technology running on top of one operating system and yet they don't need all the overhead of an entire operating system. A good example of where you might want to use this is if you have an app that is running Java 7 and at the same time, you have a brand new app that's taking advantage of the new capabilities in Java 8. And you can run these two side by side on the exact same machine without needing to install or worry about having multiple versions of Java installed. You can create their own container that they run inside of and they're isolated from each other. Now, Docker represents both a company and a piece of software. One of the things that the company offers is a registry. Now, if you think of, of how virtualization works, we need to have a, a, a disk image that represents the system we're running on. And the Docker registry is a, a registry of already existing images that we can use to run and create uh, container, containerized applications. So if we come here, we can see that they have Ubuntu, CentOS. We also have uh, more abstract things like Nginx, MongoDB, WordPress. And so there is already a whole lot of community and a whole lot of, of work that's been done to build up this system. And the Docker company supports and maintains this registry and the community around it. Now in here, I can go and search for let's say Redis, inside of our Docker registry. And you can see that there's been multiple versions of Redis created. You can find one that has different needs, uh, different ways it was set up, and use it the way that you would like. There is an official Redis image here. Uh, and there, there's many official images, which are um, basically the company that creates it has an official image or it's created by Docker as an official image. So we're going to go over to the command line. And, and a lot of that that is available on the website is also available through uh, the command line tool, which is called Docker. And the first thing we're going to look at is the Docker search command. The Docker search command allows us to actually go look at that registry uh, and search it for images that we want without needing to open up a browser. Uh, you can see here that I can search for how popular it is based upon stars and whether or not it's a trusted uh, image. Right now we're going to do a search for that exact same image of Redis and you'll see that we get the same uh, well, docker search Redis we get the exact same results that we got on the website. And it'll take just a second because it's to download them all. And we got the exact same results, but we got a lot more. So if I want to filter that, I can say Docker 
search. I want to get a popular one. So let's say 100 with 100 likes or stars. And once again, this is going up to the website and grabbing a list. And the only one that has more than 100 stars on it is the official, uh, the official Redis build. So what happens when we find an image we, we really like and we want to use it? Well, Docker has a, a, a pull command. And the pull command will go up to the website and grab the image and download it to your local machine. And the way uh, the, the name for this is Docker, or the, the format of the command is Docker pull, and it's image colon tag. Now, if you only type in just the name of the image, so I type in Ubuntu, and I've already pulled this down, and so it's going to go much faster than it, it would normally because it has to download hundreds of megabytes of, of information. But it downloads a, a lot of images for me. And if I type in Docker images, that gives me a list of all images that are currently on my local machine. You can see here that the Ubuntu image has a bunch of versions tagged inside of it. So I have Ubuntu 10 and I also have Ubuntu 14.04. And, and everything in between that. Uh, so if I wanted to not pull down everything, I could say docker pull, and I've already done this as well, but I can say docker pull CentOS, and then there's a keyword for the tag called latest, which brings down the latest version of the image. So I say docker pull CentOS colon latest, and there we have one version of CentOS, that has been downloaded one image for it, instead of all of the, the many different tags that are in there that can help save space and just clean up so there's not as much clutter in here so now that we have images on our, our local machine what do we do with them and this is where the docker run command comes in and all of these have help associated with it. type docker command and then dash dash help there's a lot of parameters in here. We're not going to go over all of them. We'll, we'll make another video on using the run command. But for right now, we're just going to say, I want to run the, well, before I do this, I want to say what I am on an Ubuntu 14.04 machine. Uh, this is actually a virtual machine I'm running on, but I am on Ubuntu 14.04. I am going to run my Docker CentOS image. And so I write Docker run, I pass in dash IT, that stands for interactive and pseudo terminal. Basically, it puts me into a terminal on that machine, gives me access to in, standard in and the, the pseudo TTY terminal. And I type in my name, I can say CentOS latest, and then I type in the command I want to run on that, on that image and I want to run bash. What Docker run does is it will create a container based upon this image and execute the command that you put. Right now I'm, I'm inputting a, a shell, so it will take me into a shell on that machine and I can continue to do things. So by executing, I'm now on a bash. And if we look at Etsy Red Hat release, I'm now in CentOS 7.0 on top of my Ubuntu 14 machine. Very cool. I have access to Yum, so I can download packages from uh, Red Hat or CentOS. And I basically have a, a, a Red Hat slash CentOS type of system right now available to me. I'm gonna go into slash home and I'm going to just make a file here. Make, uh, we're going to touch darkzebra.txt. Ah, nothing too fancy about that. And then I'm going to exit out. So now I have exited out of the terminal. And because that was the only binary running, and, and by the way, when a Docker image runs, when a Docker container runs, it only runs one 
one piece of software at a time, or I, I should say there's only one entry point, so it can only run one command. And in my case, it was bash. So as soon as I exited out of bash, the container stopped. So I can type in, there's another command here called docker ps, which is the show processes. Right now, I don't have anything in there because nothing is running. But if I type docker ps-a, which is the show all, you'll see that I have actually two images here that have failed or that are, are closed. Both of them are docker CentOS images. There's, we can use this container ID to run extra commands on this, not extra commands, but to do more with this image. So I can restart the container that I just created. And now when I run Docker PS, you'll see I now have one active running, running container. And it's actually executed the bin bash command. And, and so Docker has an attach, which will attach me back into that container. And now I am back in the bash shell I was in before. And if I go back to home, there's my dark zebra.txt. And so what I did is I created an image. I, or I, I downloaded an image. I created a container from that image and ran that container. And that can go inside and modify things and, and run extra commands, do all kinds of things that I want there. I can run curl, I can run yum. And basically this will allow me to set up some kind of an environment that maybe is, is unique to a, a CentOS system or if I want to run some specific code on CentOS. It's very simple. Once again, I've exited out and I'm done with, I have this old image here, which I don't need anymore. I can cite Docker RM and that will delete the container. Now I only have my CentOS one. And this is just a really quick overview. Basically, Docker allows you to run multiple operating, well, pseudo operating systems on top of one real kernel, one real operating system. And so I can have things that have different requirements, different libraries uh, that may not be inclusive, but when I containerize them and encapsulate them, they can run with all of their dependent libraries and that it's not going to affect the other things in other containers. It's basically just a lightweight form of virtualization. And in our next video, I'll go a little more over the, I will go over the Docker run command and how we can do some very cool things with that. So thanks for your time. Thanks for watching this Dark Zebra presentation. Please rate this video and add it to your favorites if you liked it. For additional content, you can subscribe to our YouTube channel or visit us at darkzebra.com.